Try this example. Well, this is completely conjugated. All the atoms are sp2 hybridized. Uh, the boron here is connected to uh, three atoms and no lone pairs, so it's also sp2 hybridized. Uh, by the way, um, we know that these nitrogens have one lone pair because they have no formal charge. And we're also expected to know that when boron has no formal charge, it has no lone pairs. We talked about boron um, earlier in this series of videos, and we saw that because boron lies on the left-hand side of the periodic table, uh, it oftentimes ends up with an incomplete octet. So here's boron with an incomplete uh, octet. And um, again, you're expected to know at this point in your OCHEM class that when boron has no formal charge, it also has no lone pairs. So I will not draw any lone pairs around the boron. Uh, by the way, it would be a good idea to confirm that. Uh, it would be a good idea to actually draw the Lewis structure or draw the Lewis dot structure for this boron. Uh, go back to using the skills you learned in general chemistry or the first semester of organic chemistry to draw the Lewis dot diagram and you'll see that boron ends up with no formal charge when it's connected to three atoms and no lone pairs. This pi bond has two pi electrons. This pi bond has two pi electrons. This nitrogen has already used its p orbital for the pi bond, so these cannot be pi electrons. This nitrogen has already used its p orbital for the pi bond, so these cannot be pi electrons. And there's no lone pair over here, so the p orbital, the p orbital over here is empty. So there's no pi electrons on this boron either. So I'll say that again. Uh, this boron does have a p orbital, but because it doesn't have any lone pairs, it has nothing to put in the p orbital. So this has no pi electrons either. The boron is going to use an sp2 orbital for this sigma bond, an sp2 orbital for this sigma bond, and an sp2 orbital for this sigma bond. That leaves 1p orbital, and again, there's nothing to put in that extra p orbital because there's no lone pairs. So how many pi electrons do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. Anti-aromatic. So the lesson is that you need to remember that just like when nitrogen has no formal charge, it has one lone pair. When boron has no formal charge, it has no lone pairs. This is an eight-membered ring. I've drawn an eight-membered ring with alternating single and double bonds. So try to decide what category this molecule will fall in. Well, this one was kind of a trap question. Uh, this is a trick question because it turns out that an eight-membered ring with alternating single and double bonds is not flat. An eight-membered ring with alternating single and double bonds is not flat. Therefore, this molecule is non-aromatic. Non-aromatic. Because it's not flat, we don't need to even bother counting the number of pi electrons. If something's not flat, we don't count the pi electrons. We just automatically say that it's non-aromatic. If you hadn't realized that this was not flat, uh, you would count that there's one, two, three, four, five, six. You would count eight pi electrons. So at first, it might have seemed to you like this was anti-aromatic. But again, it's not. It's not anti-aromatic. It's non-aromatic because it's not flat. Uh, now, how can you possibly tell that it's not flat? Well, as I mentioned earlier, you really can't tell unless you have it memorized. Uh, and now, um, the reason I brought this up is that um, when, uh, when professors and instructors cover this material, like I said, for the most part, they're going to tell you to usually just assume that molecules are flat. Uh, however, there, um, there are some molecules that are not flat, and this is the most common example that comes up in OCHEM classes. So if your instructor did expect you to know that any molecule was not flat, it would probably be this one that they expected. 
So if you're going to memorize any particular molecules as not being flat, this eight-membered ring would be a good one to memorize. It turns out this eight-membered ring is actually what we could call tub-shaped, not flat. Okay, so you might just want to memorize that this is one case, where even though it doesn't look like it by looking at the picture, this eight-membered ring is not flat. But as I said earlier, uh, in general, it, your instructors will probably usually want you to just assume a molecule is flat, unless it's something they've specifically told you ahead of time you're expected to know. It is not flat, this example. The oxygen has no formal charge, so it has two lone pairs. The nitrogen, the nitrogen has no formal charge, so it has one lone pair. Each of the pi bonds has two pi electrons. The nitrogen will use its p orbital for its lone pair, so these count as pi electrons. The oxygen will use its p orbital for its lone pair, so this counts as pi electrons. Uh, but then it doesn't have any p orbitals left, so these can't be pi electrons. They'll have to go in an sp2 orbital. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pi electrons. Which means the molecule is anti-aromatic. Each nitrogen has one lone pair. Each pi bond has two pi electrons. Both of these nitrogens have already used their p orbital for their pi bonds. They both already used the p orbital for the pi bonds, so they can't put the lone pair in p orbitals. So I'll cross those lone pairs out because those cannot be pi electrons, because the p orbital has already been used up. So that gives us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pi electrons. So this molecule is aromatic. Well, I think you get the idea, so maybe that's enough examples. So hopefully now you'll go out and try to find some more practice problems to work on uh, so that uh, you can get comfortable with using the skills that we've been talking about uh, in these videos.